Federal cabinet ministers are gathering right now at their retreat in Charlottetown. And while the wildfire response is one of the top priorities, so is Canada's housing crisis. One of the strategies being discussed is a possible cap on schools attracting international students. With more, let's go to CTV's chief political correspondent, Vashi Capellos. She's standing by with the housing minister, Sean Fraser. Vashi. Hey, Marcia, thanks so much for having me. I am standing by right here next to the man who oversees this very vital portfolio for the country, housing, the Minister of Housing, Sean Fraser. Minister, good to have you with us this It's afternoon. a pleasure to be with you, and I in person, too. Yeah, very much so. I appreciate you making the time. I, I wanted to start off just by asking you about the scope of the issue from where you sit. Uh, is the lack of affordable housing, and I mean that in the most general, widest sense of sure. the word, to you, a national crisis? Uh, I think we, we've certainly hit a crisis situation in particular for the families who are living with uh, intense housing challenges. I'm talking about seniors who can't find a place to live in the community where their grandkids are being raised, students who have to live more than an hour away uh, from the place that they study, uh, sometimes households with two people working who can't find a place that they can afford. Uh, for all of these people, it's a crisis situation. Uh, I should point out there's other people who've actually done quite well, uh, people who owned uh, assets that have appreciated in value. Uh, so the exact nature of how a, a national crisis impacts you varies immensely between a di different people who have different life situations. Uh, but I don't think it does any good for somebody in my position who wants to play a leadership role in solving these challenges to ignore the magnitude of it. So to your question, uh, certainly I'd characterize the, uh, the situation as, as a crisis now, but it's also an extraordinary opportunity. Because if we get it right, if we can build the homes that are going to solve the challenges Canadians are living through, uh, the Canadian economy is positioned very well. But we have to uh, clear some of these bottlenecks to the economic growth that people will really feel in order to get where we need to be. If, in fact, it is a crisis of the magnitude that, that you describe and that we are hearing from Canadians, what does that necessitate in terms of a response from your government? And, and my primary focus for that question is whether it does necessitate a response from the federal government and whether it was a mistake for the prime minister just weeks ago to describe it as not a primary federal responsibility. Well, before I address the my own uh, take on this, let me just say we should listen to the second half of that sentence where he said, but we can and we must help. Uh, look, I've learned, uh, if anything, over my eight years as a member of parliament, when somebody who comes and bears their soul and tells you there's a problem they're living with sits down in your office, they don't want you to say, this is somebody else's problem to solve. They want to know how you're going to help. Certainly there's a role for municipalities. Certainly there's a role for provinces. Yes, there's a role for the federal government. But when I'm having conversations with people, what they want is leadership. Uh, I have an opportunity to step into a role where we can actually lead the country towards a, a better set of circumstances where people can see hope for themselves in the housing market in Canada, whether that's finding a place to rent, whether it's one day owning a home. Uh, so my own point of view is yes, it demands a response from the federal government. Part of that response is going to be leveraging federal policies, but it's also going to be incentivizing the kind of change at a community level where land use decisions are taken to actually inspire them to issue the permits to build more quickly and working with the private sector to make sure that they have access to the workforce they need to build the stock that people are asking for. I think what you're saying will make a lot of sense to Canadians. At the same time, I think those Canadians listening would ask, why didn't the Prime Minister say that? And I take your point about the second half of, of what he did say in that answer. But he wasn't as specific as you about the fact that the federal government should, maybe doesn't and hasn't, but should be the leader on this issue, even though it is a cross-jurisdictional issue. Uh, certainly. Well, look, I would actually point not just to what people are saying, but look at some of the things that we have started doing, and I hope that we're going to be able to do more and more of these kinds of things. If I look at the Housing Accelerator Fund, for example, this is a fund where the federal government is putting $4 billion on the table, but incentivizing municipal changes by saying we will contribute a per unit uh, uh, subsidy for you to make the kinds of changes that will get permits out the door. This means having denser housing options in big and medium-sized cities. This means having access to the kind of infrastructure that will allow development in smaller communities. And this might even mean developing a, a modern digital permitting system for municipalities that don't have that yet. What we've actually done, not just spoken about, but done, is created a program where we're asking for communities to identify what their solutions are and having the federal government put money on the table to incentivize the changes that are going to realize those local solutions. And 
and, and I'm glad you brought that up because I sorry part of the interruption, but I wanted to ask about the accelerator fund, for example, because what it does, and I, and I take your point about the way it's designed, uh, in, in its, you know, when it when it plays out, it's supposed to accelerate the building through the $4 billion of 100,000 new homes. The CMHC says there needs to be 5.8 million new homes created by 2030 in order to restore affordability. What your government has proposed so far in that vein and in other veins will just make a small dent. So is it about amplifying what you've already done or are you going to put new things on the table and soon? So we will absolutely be looking at new and more policies to help accelerate the construction of more housing. But keep in mind that the direct impact of the federal policies when we're dealing with either affordable housing for vulnerable families outside of the market or incentivizing change through the Housing Accelerator Fund to have municipalities permit more homes. We're not even talking right now about the homes that are going to be built in the private sector. There's a program that we just made an announcement through in Vancouver, the Rental Construction Financing Initiative, where we put $500 million in financing on the table that's going to have in How one... How many more rental units is that going to create? That, two mil that two million by 2030 so are needed. Th that, that particular project is going to have 1,100 units in Vancouver, but all of that money is getting paid back. We're going to repeat these kinds of successes across the country until we actually can create solutions that people can see are going to work in their communities and solve the problem in their communities. It's not enough for us just to deal with 100 or even 1,000 units at a time. But when you take a step back and look at the combined impact of the different federal policies, when we can align them with the work that provinces and municipalities and the private sector are doing, I have faith we can get where we need to be. It's I, not going to be easy, but I think we can do it. And I understand that. And I'm not trying to take away from the stuff that your government has done so far. But I think, and if I put myself in the minds of people listening, you know, we've done all this stuff. We're going to repeat the stuff that works. And, and it's going to have a, you know, on the whole, create uh, and make a dent in the problem that, that people are facing. As you've been doing that stuff, the problem has become worse at a pace that has far exceeded any type of solution that, that has been put forward by your government or, to be fair, by any provincial government. Right now, two people who make minimum wage in Vancouver cannot even come close to being able to rent an apartment for over three, you know, it's more, the average rent's over $3,000. How will 1,100 units change that? And will you actually, by 2030, for example, be able to do something that does affect change that matters. So just to put it in, into perspective, uh, that is one example of one funding announcement that we've made on the 1,100 units. 17% of the rental units being put up in Vancouver right now are benefiting from federal support. The reality is, and I think you hit the nail on the head, there's a, there's a shift in the nature of the problem that exists today compared to even a few years ago when we launched the National Housing Strategy. And this is an area where I think people expect and will see more from me because when the National Housing Strategy was first launched, it was responding to decades of inaction by federal governments, both liberal and conservative, I should say, on actually building out the social housing for low-income families that could never afford a place in the market. What I've seen over the last couple of years is more and more people who might even have a job, where you might even have two people working in a household, to your point about uh, uh, people who are working earning minimum wage in Vancouver, not even minimum wage, people who are working in professional jobs still course, can't yeah. be able to manage the monthly payment either for rent or to buy a place. So as the problem has shifted from the focus really being on low-income vulnerable families who need publicly subsidized social housing to including those families but also people who are trying to get into the market by having the federal government support construction at a price point they can afford. So this is the directional shift that I hope to achieve with my time in this office to speak to those people who might be working, to, might be able to yeah, afford to, a place if it existed at their price point. To be fair, it's new, but it's not brand new. It's been around for a number of years. Your housing policy was launched in 2017. You could argue that a lot of people had trouble affording a home even with two jobs you know, prior to the pandemic. I, I just really quickly want to ask you something that started to, to float over the past few days, and that's the possibility of capping uh, the number of international students and international student visas here. You were previously uh, serving in the role of immigration minister. I think I listened to a podcast you were on a few months back in which you said you didn't think you had the levers to be able to, to affect change in that area. What's changed and is it basically just a political imperative at this point? Uh, no, so there are uh, different jurisdictional constraints, but we have to work with other levels of government to solve those. To my earlier point, it's up to us to demonstrate leadership and how we can achieve these ends, even when it does engage other levels of government. So on the international student program, the jurisdictional challenge relates to the fact that provinces get to select designated learning institutes, which schools can benefit from the program. Uh, that's not a decision that the federal government can take unilaterally. But you could cap the number. Well, that's one of the things that we could look at. It's not the only solution, by why the way. Why haven't you, when the number doubled over the last eight years, 
just looked at this prior to now? So it's really increased rapidly in the last few years compared to the rate of increase we saw even three and four years ago. Uh, we do, I think, owe it to institutions to have some of the conversations with them about what measures we can implement that will make sure that when we welcome students, we make sure that they're supported after they arrive. The International Student Program is extraordinary. It serves Canada's interests. It contributes tens of billions of dollars to our GDP. And it provides a pipeline of young and talented people who will be Canadian one day. But what we've seen is certain private colleges in particular, who I think are abusing the program, who are bringing people in, who are not supporting them, who are not providing housing options near where their uh, places of study exist, if they're providing them at all. The people who come need to be better supported, but we do have to manage the growth when it comes to the student program more effectively than even immigration problems more generally, because what we see is people uh, arrive in concentrated communities that have a unique localized impact, and I think local residents in those communities deserve to see from different levels of government that we're live to the issue and want to make sure we don't overwhelm those communities, but can welcome people who will generate population growth, economic growth, and make the community more vibrant place to Am live. Am I to interpret that, that a cap is coming? Uh, look, that's not a decision that has been taken. I think there's conversations I've had on a range of different options with uh, Minister Miller. There's some work that we were looking at, how to better partner with institutions while I was still in the immigration portfolio. Uh, but I don't think we should be afraid to talk openly about the different options that we ought to consider. I think Canadians who are struggling to see themselves in the housing market, to see a future for themselves in our community, they deserve to know that we're looking under every stone for the solutions that exist, both on the supply and demand side of the equation. I'm out of time, and I know your time is I just really quickly want to ask, will there be sort of a formalized plan for housing put on the table for Canadians in the fall? Uh, you should expect to see something along those lines from me over the next number of months. Okay, great. Minister, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Marcia, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank Thanks you. So much.